Jeremiah 22. Thus saith the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah. And he's at the temple. He's at the palace. And speak this, speak there this word. And say, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, that sitteth upon the throne of David. Thou and thy servants, and thy people, that enter by these gates. So he's at the gates again. Everybody going in and out. But saith the Lord, Execute judgment and righteousness. I know we're in the Old Testament. And I know I'm bringing Jeremiah to America and the world. That's what God expects from every leader. Whether you're a king, queen, president, prime minister, whatever your authority is <coughs> in a country, in a land, in a state, in a province, in a city, a town, God expects the leaders, saved or lost, Judgment and righteousness, and if they don't, they're going to stand before God, saved or lost, the judgment seat of Christ, or the great white throne judgment for their failure. And if there's one thing I know, I don't know about other countries, but I do know something with America, there is no judgment and there is no righteousness fully. I'm not going to say there's not in our court system. When you can allow a criminal walk away because of technical difficulty or a slick lawyer, that's not judgment. The Bible is set to forth the stand. Are there two or three witnesses? And in the modes of capital punishment, those two or three witnesses shall cast the first stone. Well, what if they lied? Let God burden their conscience. But this nation is so far from God, this nation is so far from conscience, this so nation we said earlier, I don't know if we said it during Isaiah or Jeremiah, they can't blush. And deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor. When somebody has been oppressed, somebody has been overcharged, when somebody has been uh, uh, swindled out of, of a paycheck, when somebody has been mistreated, it is the job of the government, save their loss, to make it right. There are plenty, and I heard people, you know, going to $15 an hour. And yet the capitalistic system of America, you can't survive on anything but more than $15 an hour. And they're going to allow the, the big monstrous companies, and I'm not preaching for them and against them, they're going to raise their prices even make it more. That's not Bible. That's not correct. When a nation taxes its people upon a tax of a tax to be a tax, that you're just overtaxed, that's not Bible. And when, when there are your utility bills and your bills survive, and you can't even survive, Judgment seat of Christ, great white throne judgment, whether I'm right, whether I'm wrong, and I can be wrong, it'll be weighed out at either judgment. Do no wrong. Wow, that's a bold, big statement. When the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, when you are executing judgment and righteousness, we, when you are on a judgment, and you are on a throne. You are in the Oval Office. You're in the Kremlin. You're in the palace. God expects you to put that away and to do right. You are to go above and beyond. Do no violence to the stranger. That would be Gentile. And there was a prejudice against the Gentiles and the half breeds the Jewish and Gentile. It's there. The fatherless, 
the children who have no fathers because of death. Now we got uh, we got a nation today of fatherless children because you know they don't want to take responsibility. They want to mate like animals in the bed and not marry and you know get uh, we call it uh, welfare for children and all that. The more children you have, the more welfare you get. That's not the case here for fatherless. Father, the dad has died. Nor the widow. The husband has died. And women could not get jobs like they had today. The children were given mediocre jobs. You know, it's funny they say in this country, well, you know, we used to have children slave laborers and all that, and children used to work in the factory. Yeah, but the children weren't shooting anybody like they're doing today. The children ain't wasting their money and wasting their time on stupid electronic gadgets like they're doing today. The children ain't listening to filthy garbage music like they are doing today. The children had respect for the police department and their parents and people authority unlike they do today. You know what, what they rank on what happened yesteryear? I look at yester now. That they were doing something right. They had the Bible. They had they had uh, they had righteousness. They had judgment. They had what's not today. Neither shed innocent blood, murder in this place, and that's going on. There's innocent blood being shed today in America. For if ye do this thing indeed, if you do right, then shall there enter in by these gates of this house, kings, plural, sitting on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. We know that doesn't happen. We're going to come to a particular statement in Jeremiah. I don't know if we'll get to it tonight or, or willing tomorrow night. Because I don't want to risk, risk the scriptures. I don't want to. You know, okay, we did a chapter and miss anything. But if you will not hear these words, that's what they do. They don't hear. You know, they talk about the original sin. The Catholic Church brings that the original sin. The original sin. What is the original sin? Well, the woman, before she was called Eve, she wasn't called Eve. That was afterwards. She added and subtracted to the Word of God. That's the original sin. Now the Catholic Church ain't going to talk about that because they got their own perverted Bible. The Catholic Bible. Isn't that interesting? But what was the original sin of man and woman was okay, they ate the fruit. No, that's not the original sin. You see, you have glorified the sin. Like, you know, shacking up, having an affair and all that. You're just giving a, a nice, comfy little teddy bear, teddy bear kind of word. I'll tell you what they did. They rebelled against the word of God. God said, thou shalt not eat of the tree of the, of the uh, knowledge of good and evil. They ate of the tree. They rebelled. And he says, but if you will not hear these words, rebellion. That goes all the way back to Adam. Now, that wouldn't have been the Adam's attraction of the Word of God because Adam and Eve weren't told they couldn't do that. Like, well, how come God didn't kill Cain? Because there was no commandment about murder. That didn't come to after Noah came out of the ark. Now, from Cain's killing Abel to the ark would be, you know, God don't approve of that. That was Lamech talking to his two wives, you know. It was common knowledge. But if you will not hear these words, if you rebel, I swear by myself, God speaking, saith the Lord. And I believe it's in Hebrews where God says, I verily couldn't swear by the greater, I swear it by myself. When God is on the throne, so help me, me, God speaking. We have a God who cannot, will not, is unable to lie. And he's making an oath by himself. 
and Jeremiah 22 5 we know that is what Judah does this house shall become a desolation and it will that's the king's house that's not the house of the Lord the temple for thus saith the Lord unto the king's house see, of Judah thou art Gilead to me the head of Lebanon yet surely I will make thee a wilderness unproductive and cities which are not inhabited empty cleared out dead uh, captivity I will prepare destroyers against thee everyone his weapon they shall cut down thy choice cedars and cast them into the fire fire is coming and many nations shall pass by this city Gentiles and they shall say every man to his neighbor wherefore has the Lord done this unto his great city and they shall answer the nations talking to the nations don't tell me the unsaved don't know they know because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God and worship other gods and serve them nations know now many people may pretend they don't know they know you know they may teach evolution but down deep inside covered up by the filth and, and, and the smoke of education they know they were made by God why is it that when men cuss they cuss the name of Jesus and no other name we be not for the dead Jeremiah has been told not to pray for the people. Now don't cry. But Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. Neither bemoan them, but weep sore for him that goes away. Captivity. It is more like Job said. It is more that, you know what? The dead know nothing. Solomon said that. But those that are alive, those that have been carried away, woe be to them. For ye shall return no more and see his native country. Now we're talking about the kingly line. And we're coming up to a particular statement in the Bible. It's remarkable. For thus saith the Lord touching Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, which reigneth instead of Josiah his father, which went forth out of his place. He shall return thither no any more. He ain't coming back. But he shall die in the, the place where they had carried him captive, Babylon. And shall see the land no more. Remember, that's all about the Jewish. The Jewish heaven is the land of Israel. Is that kingdom. <clears throat> that's why we don't pray thy kingdom come. That's not for the church. That's why we don't say, this land is my land, this land is your land. That's not Gentile. That's not church. And there's only one land in all the earth, of all the planets. There's only one piece of property by God, on the eyes of God, that God has given to one group of people. That's the land of Israel, to the people of Israel. Don't call it Palestine. Woe unto him that builds his house by unrighteousness. Well, what's that? You built your property, you built your land, you built everything you had, and you done it not by right. Eminent domain. Where I came from, New London, Connecticut, eminent domain was being practiced for one big pharmaceutical company that's being in the news today. And people were losing their houses, people were losing their, their lifestyle, and people were hating it. And the houses they grew up, and it's funny, they went in there with an the imminent domain, and many of those properties, nothing happened. They were destroyed, and nothing happened. They go in there with wickedness, they go there with evilness. They're saying today that those tower, that tower down in, in Daytona, I'm not Daytona, uh, in Miami, that, that collapsed, or they're saying today they already knew about the collapse, they knew, they paid off these people, that's unrighteous. Hires with the money. We'll let the money talk. That's unrighteous. And his chambers by wrong. That's rooms. Chambers are rooms. 
You built the rooms of your place and your house all by wrong. What is wrong? It's not right. What is unrighteousness? Not righteousness. That's a that's a that's a vast scale. I guarantee there is a vast scale of wrongdoing and unrighteousness that uses neighbor's service without wages. There are people who have done service, they've done the work, and you didn't pay them for it. And giveth him not for his work. You didn't pay them. That's in the law. And says, I will build me a wide house, a large chair. I'm going to build me bigger. Sound familiar with the parable that Jesus gave? And cutteth him out windows, and cedar that seal that that ceiling with cedar, the best, the best, and painted with vermilion. That's red, redness, red paint. Now I'm gonna go bigger. I'm gonna go better. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it all by unrighteousness. We do it all by righteousness. I'm not gonna do it right. Red is a is an expensive expensive dye like purple. I'm gonna have the best and the the most expensive. And I don't care if I do it by wrong, I don't care if I do it by unrighteousness. I'm gonna do it. Shall thou reign? If you do wrong, you you rebel against God, you're not gonna reign. Because thou closest thyself in cedar, expensive trees. Did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice? Well, it, it, it's remarkable because Josiah did. Josiah is one of the good kings. You should have followed your father's example. Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this known to me, saved the Lord? Your father, Josiah, gave you a proper example. You know, woe be to people that have godly parents or godly grandparents that tried to do right. I mean, we're all sinners, but they tried to do right. And you grew up in rebellion. Woe be to you. Because you have no excuse. Your parents did right. Your grandparents. Timothy is a great example. Now his father may not have done right. As far as what we can read. But his mother and his grandmother did right. And then God gave him a great example through Paul. And the problem with America today and the world today. Is okay. Those children left the proper care of their parents. That did right. For unrighteousness. And then they taught their children how to do unrighteousness and do wrong. And their children taught unrighteous and wrong. And their children, and it got worse and worse and worse and worse. That's evolution. It don't get better. It gets worse. Evolution is a lie. They say everything's going to get better. Not with age. And my health is breaking down and I'm seeing limitations. I wish I didn't have for the service of the Lord. But thine eyes and thy heart are not but for thy covetousness. That's a sin. And for it shed innocent but look, look at thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet. And for the oppression and for the violence to do it. So he is not doing right. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning Jehoiakim. The son of Josiah. King of Judah. They shall, they shall not lament. Fear. Lamentation. For him. Saying oh my brother. Or oh my sister. They shall not lament for him. Say oh Lord. Oh his glory there. He shall be buried with the burial of an ass. Take it down to the city dump. 
dead animal in the room. Take it down. Wash it. Get it off the street. Drawn and cast for beyond the gates of Jerusalem. That's how they got rid of that. They tied a bunch of ropes around it and they dragged so they didn't touch it. Because if they touched it, they'd be unclean. So they would tie it up. They would drag it. They would push it. Go to Lebanon and cry. And lift up thy voice in Bashan. And cry from the passages. For all thy lovers are destroyed. And I spake unto thee in prosperity. But thou sayest, I won't hear. But look at that. That's what's being taught today in the radio and television. Prosperity. And they're buying that slop right up. God's saying, obey me and I'll give you the riches. I'll take care of you. I'll defend this city. That's what the that's what the Christian wants today. The Christian, oh, I want God to bless me. I want to be rich. I want to be great. But that's not the Christian life. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Marvel not if the world hates you. They want to steal from the Old Testament. Yes, if a man was rich in the Old Testament, God was probably blessing him. But today they want to pass that riches. Oh, you know. If you say God will make you rich and God will make you great, God will take care of everything. There will be no troubles, no problems. You're looking at the Old Testament, not, not the church age. This, shall, this have been thy manner from thy youth. Now obey is not my boy. You have been rebellious against God from your youth. The wind shall eat up thy pastors. What's the wind? Nothing. Thy lover shall go into the captivity. Surely then shalt thou be ashamed and confounded in all thy wickedness. Too late. Too late when you're in Babylon. Too late when you stand before Nebuchadnezzar. And the city's been burned. Oh, and have it a Lebanon that maketh thy nest in the cedars. How gracious shalt thou be when pangs come upon thee. The pain as a woman in travail. Again, that reference usually has a, some kind of condemnation to the tribulation period. But it's likened here to the destruction of Judah. To the destruction of Jerusalem. To the destruction of the king's house. To the destruction of the temple. Pain and agony. Tribulation period. The time of Jacob's trouble is also the time of when Judah is going to fall. As I live, saith the Lord, there's God taking an oath by his name. Though Kaniah, look what God did. He dropped the J-E or J-A. He dropped the J. A or J E off. You say, you know what? The Jehovah, I don't even want it named on that king. Call him Kaniah. The son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, which is a sign with that. Yeah. King of Judah, were the signet of my right hand, yet will I pluck thee. If you were if you were right here in heaven by my right hand where Jesus is. I still get rid of you. I will give thee the land of them that seek thy life. Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon, Chaldees. Into the hand of them that whose face thou fearest. In the land of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. In the hand of Chaldees. Job said, that which I fear is thou hast brought upon me. Here it is. I will cast thee out. Get rid of you. Thy mother that bare thee into another country, Babylon, where ye were not born, and there shall ye die. Unto a land wherein the desire to return, thither shall they not return. You want to come back? You want to come back to your homeland? You won't. And there are some that come back, Ezra and Nehemiah. 
Is this man Kanai? There he is, a broken idol. 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 I D O L E. I D O L. Is he a vessel wherein no pleasure? Not in the hands of God. Wherefore are they cast out of the land, the sight of God? He and his seed are they cast into the land, Babylon, which they know not. Now watch this. 29 and 30 need to be marked. O earth, earth, earth. That's written to all the people on the earth. Israel, Gentile, African, Asian, Native American, South American, the Mexican, even you know before their name came to be. All the people in the world, in the earth, even today, there's no time frame. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man, Kaniah, king, childless. A man that shall not prosper in his day. For no man of his seed shall prosper. Sitting on the throne of David. And ruling any more in Judah. There is the virgin birth. Reason. Why is there virgin birth? Because God told Kaniah, I'm done with you. At your point, none of your children are going to sit on the throne of Judah. You're done. You're finished. That's it. And there has never been a king in it. There's a prime minister, but there's no king. Problem. God told David there'll be forever somebody of your children to sit on your throne. God just told Kaniah of, of David, I'm done. I'm finished. No man of your seat. Now, God has a problem, if God has any problems. How on earth is God going to bring Jesus Christ to sit on the throne of David that Gabriel told Mary? The virgin birth. Mary's has run her genealogy all the way back to David. Not, not Solomon. I believe, I believe it's Nathan. I forget, I forget which. But it's not Solomon. Now Joseph, Mary's husband, who adopts the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the kingly line of Jesus Christ. God will put the virgin birth in action. Spoken about in Isaiah. Before Jeremiah... God said before Jeremiah that this man right in child. Before that, God said, hey, I'm going to need a virgin birth. Why? Because Kaniah. No more any of Kaniah's children will be on that throne. So God has to do the virgin birth in order for Jesus Christ to be on that throne. And anybody who denies the virgin birth that does not accept the virgin birth, you're not scriptural. Because Isaiah and Jeremiah will tell us right now about the virgin birth. Because if there is no virgin birth, there is no Jesus taking the throne of David. Jeremiah 22, 29, and 30. 